Welcome to a new edition of the Everlast Power video series. Today, we will continue our progress on our 5x10 project trailer build. In part 5, we were able to complete the top rail. Now, today we're adding some angle iron trim to reinforce the trailer and to give us a good platform on which we can slide our flooring into. So this is where we left off. We have the top rails completed and now as you can see, the inch and a half by inch and a half 14 gauge angle is laying on top of the trailer. We're going to use this to create a surround trim that will lay on top of the frame rails and hold our flooring in on the front and sides. Now this is going to be fairly easy and simple. You don't want to solid seam weld this in. You only want to spot weld the angle in every 12 inches or so with about a one inch spot weld. Here I'm lining up the angle. There's no need to cope or notch this angle at this point unless you really want the challenge. The metal's thin enough that you can hammer it flat together at the joints. At this point it's critical that you clamp this securely to the trailer so that it's helping to reinforce the frame tubing and is securely backed up against the top rail support so it can be welded there as well. This is the point I start welding things up along the top rail. And it's really surprising just how big a difference adding this piece of trim reinforces the trailer. So here's a close-up of what I was doing. You don't have to do any fancy weave at this point, just a clean and straight weld will work just fine. Now I'm ready to put the floor in. I typically use number 9 by 3 quarter expanded metal for this application. Now if you want to, you could floor the trailer at this point with wood, but it makes it much heavier and time consuming to put in and even maintain in the long run. The expanded metal holds up over time, especially if it's welded in right. Expanded metal like this comes in several standard sizes which are just right for dropping in. A little trim here or there, depending on how your trailer is built, is all you probably need. In case you're wondering, there is a trick to welding expanded metal. When you're trying to weld it, try to weld it on the points, especially on the ends. Start on the base metal and push the puddle to the pointed tip of the expanded metal. Once the puddle seems to grab the expanded metal, let go of the trigger at this point, and then go on to the next weld. Also, you should note that running the metal this direction makes it much stronger, especially when you're running up and down the trailer. Along the sides, you can weld the metal every few inches. On the end, I typically tack every piece to prevent a bent or loose point from puncturing a tire. Down the sides, it isn't as critical. As long as you make a fairly regular weld, you'll be fine. Of course, on the very ends, to make sure that everything stays tied in and doesn't come loose, I weld every point on the sides for the first 8 or 12 inches or so, and then I start skip welding. It's time to weld the fenders on. There are several different ways you can mount a fender. The fenders I have are a little small for the size tires that we have. Originally, we were going to use 14-inch tires, but because the 15s were just as cheap and we are using a 3,500-pound axle on this trailer, it just made sense to go with the bigger tires. These fenders will work fine, but I'm going to have to center the fenders over the tires carefully. There's enough room, but we're going to have to make some mounting brackets, as you'll see in a few minutes, to accommodate these tires. Believe it or not, in some trailer factories, these fenders are simply screwed on with self-tapping screws. Personally, I like to weld them, but you better be careful not to burn through the thin gauge metal. Now I've used larger fenders in the past and actually welded them directly to the side of the trailer frame. You can see what I'm talking about here in an old trailer build that I did in the past. Again, there are several ways to mount these fenders. Do what works for you. When you're mounting a fender like this, put one small tack right in the center of the fender. This will allow you to make adjustments in the angle of the fender so that you can get it as straight as possible. Usually you will find that there is no such a thing as a straight fender because if they've been stamped out, there may be a little bow in the fender here or there that you don't expect. 
Well, that's okay. A little massaging here or there, after you make attack weld, you can get most of it out. I'm going to use a little of the leftover inch by inch and a half angle to create a nice little mount to support the bottom of the fender. You, know, you can trim and taper the overhang back really easily with a cutoff wheel on a grinder. Actually, after I mounted this, I decided to turn the angle over and weld it differently. Remember what I said about tacking things up before welding them? Well, I ignored my own advice. A cutoff wheel on a grinder is a fabricator's best friend. Yeah, I did weld that all the way up, didn't I? Now that's okay. I know how to fix it. Join us in our next edition as we start to wrap up the trailer build. We'll be fabricating and installing the trailer gate. 